capturing gameplay from the Nintendo 3DS is quite a challenge, but custom firmware has us covered. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to stream your 3DS to your computer. Anyways, I'm Anton, and let's get started. To start off, we'll need a computer of your choice. I'll be using a Windows PC for this tutorial, but Mac and Linux are also compatible. However, they use a different streaming client. This guide is only compatible with new Nintendo 3DS and 2DS systems, because even though Boot NTR works on older models, they cannot stream to your PC. There is a different method available using HZmod, but you'll only get around 10 frames per second, so it isn't really worth doing. If your system isn't modded, check out this video in the description and the title card on screen. This guide is designed with 11.15 in mind, so check the description and comment section to see if anything has changed. And finally, you'll need a stable wireless internet connection. Make sure that your 3DS internet is set up correctly, and it's connected to the same network as your computer. And if you can, I recommend using an ethernet cable. And finally, I'm not responsible for anything that were to go wrong while following this tutorial. But if you follow everything carefully and correctly, you shouldn't run into any issues. And I'll even touch on some troubleshooting methods towards the end of the video. So with that out of the way, the first thing we'll need to do is go down into the description and go to the streaming 3DS page on my website. Click on the Luma 3DS boot.firm button, which will take you to a GitHub page. Scroll down to the boot.firm file and click it to download. Head back to my website and click on the boot NTR button. This will bring you to another GitHub page. Scroll down to the files and there will be many to choose from. This is the boot NTR selector application that will allow us to stream our system to our computer. The only difference between FONZD and Pablo MK7 is the banner displayed on the top screen. I personally prefer the blue one as it matches the app interface, but again it doesn't matter which one you select as they'll both function exactly the same. And just ignore the 3DS X file as that is for the homebrew launcher only and is not recommended. So basically Mode 3 is a version of Boot NTR specifically designed for older 3DS models. But since streaming does not work for older systems, just ignore the Mode 3 versions. And the final thing we're going to download is our streaming client for our specific platform. Since I'm using Windows, I'm just going to click on the Snicker Stream button. This will once again bring us to another GitHub page. Scroll down to the files and download the 64-bit version. Qt NTR 3DS functions exactly the same and is available for Mac and Linux, and is very similar to Snickerstream. Once it is downloaded, unzip the folder using whatever program you prefer. So now we should have these files and our streaming client of choice. You may also have the extra mode 3 if you are using an older system. Now remove the SD card from your 3DS and insert it into your computer. First, drag and drop the boot from file and replace it with the one already on the root of your SD card. This is a custom version of the Luma custom firmware that will allow us to use the boot NTR selector. Next, place your boot NTR selector CAA file into your CAA folder. Once you've done that, go ahead and eject your SD card and insert it into your system. Power it on, and once it's booted up, launch FBI. Go to SD, then scroll down to CIAs. Select the file and press Install CIA. Press A to confirm and press any button once it's completed. Once it's successfully installed, press the home button to return to the 3DS home menu and close FBI. It will notify you about the new software added, so just unwrap it. Now before we launch the application, we need to obtain our 3DS IP address. To do this, simply press the left shoulder trigger, D-pad down, and select all at the same time to open the Rosalina menu. Scroll down to Debugger Options. Press A on Enable Debugger. Once it says Starting Debugger OK, press B to go back to the Debugger Options menu. Your 3DS IP address should now be displayed in the top right corner. I recommend just saving it somewhere so you don't forget it. Now scroll down to Disable Debugger, and press A. Once it says Debugger Disabled Successfully, just go ahead and press B once again to return to the Debugger Options menu. Then press B twice to exit the menu. Now we're going to launch the Boot NTR Selector. Once it's loaded, press Use Default. And then press Save Settings. And finally, select version 3.6. Once the application automatically closes, you should now be at the home menu. And now everything is ready to go. And now every time you launch it, it should boot into 3.6. If you get an error, I recommend just rebooting your system and trying again, as I've run into weird issues occasionally. Now head back to your device, and open your streaming client. Once it's open, just input the 3DS IP address that we saved earlier. Once you've done that, go ahead and press connect. If a Windows security pop-up appears, just go ahead and press allow access. If everything was set up correctly, you should now see your 3DS displayed on your computer. If you're unable to stream games such as Star Fox 64 3D or Pokemon Sun and Moon, after launching the boot NTR selector, just go ahead and click on NFC patch, then press connect. Now launch the game and it should work perfectly. However, the internet will be disabled, so you won't be able to play online. 
but if you're looking to stream CTGP7, don't worry. The launcher includes a customized version of NTR Custom Firmware, which is optimized for use with the game. It works extremely well as I was able to stream the game on YouTube. Also, you cannot stream DS or DSiWare games, as Boot NTR only works on the 3DS firmware. If you are having no luck whatsoever, reboot your console, then launch FBI. Navigate to SD, then enter the 3DS folder. Select the Boot NTR Selector folder. Choose the current directory and delete it. Press A to confirm and press any button once it's completed. Press the home button to return to the 3DS home menu and close FBI. Now launch the boot NTR selector. Press use default and press save settings. And finally select version 3.6. Now it should work perfectly. Now let's take a look at the sneaker stream settings. These values determine the picture quality. There are presets to choose from, but I recommend just keeping everything unbalanced, as the other options may produce bad results. You can set the priority screen between the top and bottom. This is because sneaker stream can only focus on one at a time, meaning the other one will be lower in frame rate. This is very useful if you want to stream games such as WarioWare Gold, as it primarily uses the bottom screen. You can also customize the interpolation and screen layout. Remember to reboot your system and relaunch the boot NTR selector to allow the changes that you make. Check out the Snickerstream GitHub wiki for more information. Unfortunately, you cannot record sound through wireless streaming. However, by using a 3.5mm audio cable and connecting it from your 3DS to your PC, you should be able to pick it up. If you're going to be using OBS to stream or capture gameplay, I recommend setting up an overlay. I've got one for the top screen only and one for the dual screen display. For the background, I duplicated the Snickerstream window and added a blur filter using StreamFX. It looks really cool and matches any game. So now let's take a look at some gameplay, just so you can get an idea of what you can do. I'll even include the audio. <laughs> nice par. Anyways, that's about it for the video. I hope you did enjoy it, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button to see future videos heading your way. If you need any help, comment down below or even join the Antimetro Discord server. And with that, I will see you all in the next one.